Super Sunday. Fittingly, we've put together a super roundtable to kick around the football this morning. Very good to have with me first the former political reporter for Atlantic Magazine, now the president of Truscott Rossman, which not only has an office in Lansing, but has now opened an office in the nation's capital. We have one here in Detroit, Ron too. Don't Fournier. Oh, and in Detroit as Thank well, you. yes, of course. Political strategist Dennis Darnoy, back with us again. Thank you. Columnist for the Detroit News, Bankley Thompson is here, and syndicated editorial cartoonist Henry Payne. Gang, I think what I wanted to do with you first this morning as we look toward the State of the Union is I'm going to give ask you all what is the state of our union complicated question it would seem Ron what is it what is it right now the state of our union is a mess uh, we as a people are completely uh, divided amongst each other we're sorting into tribes we're being led by people allowing ourselves to be led by people who don't want to compromise who don't want to come together who want to pit us against each other um, it, it, it's a time of it's an inflection point for the country and we just don't appear to be ready for it right now mm. 70% of the public is, is, is opposed to our current president. But, but, this morning, 304,000 jobs created. We did 50 get a job more than the economists predicted. Uh, we just went through two. Then Henry, let, three me, and let, a half let me move to you next. Yeah. Give me your state of the union. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I mean, those of us in the media, we got caught up in the, in the bubble and the, and the mm -hmm. Twitter feeds and all that. But, you know, if you're out in the heartland America, you're making stuff, you're in manufacturing. Manufacturing is very healthy in this country. Uh, we just went through two, three, three and a half percent plus growth quarters, which uh, the smart people told us couldn't happen anymore. Uh, I, do, I was just in Ferguson, Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, a month ago. Um, you know, you had riots across this country back in 2014 through 2016. Deep racial divisions from Charlotte to Milwaukee, Baltimore, uh, Ferguson. Uh, are you, that's are not, you, that's are not you, happening. Are you offering up that the racial divisions have dissipated? But you don't have that. I mean, the, you know, we were, turn, we were mm. tuning in every night and we were seeing fires on our television, journalists in our streets. I mean, that's, that's not happening. <laughs> so I, 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 don't know what I, lens, think, I, think, I don't know what lens Henry's looking yeah. at things. Well, then I think the State we, of the what Union we have, have you seen any fires no. recently in, uh, in uh, the inner cities? Oh, some serious moral fires, by the way. Moral? Yeah, yeah. I, I think where we are, uh, Devin, is we've given into reprobate politics. I think. Um, uh, the nation is seriously divided. I think we no longer have the moral clout, the moral authority. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that I hear tell me that, you know, once upon a time, we used, when we were raising kids, we tell kids, look up to the President of the United States. But it's difficult for any of us on this table to say that today because of where we are as a nation. And unfortunately, industry, it depends on where you look at Devon. Because when you talk to farmers up north, I don't think they will tell you that things are working out for them. When you go to California, talk to those farmers in California, things are not working out. So I think we are in a, almost in a sinking ship, and we need a rescue. Four, four percent mm -hmm. unemployment bank. Like we are at historic. But levels. the auto industry, for example, that you cover, um, feels seventeen million in sales last year. But they're very. But they have no idea what their what the what things mean coming next next year. They don't know whether where the tariffs are going. Oh, yeah. no, and, that's, the, and, yeah. and the jobs people have don't pay what they did a generation ago. Right. The jobs people have don't have the defined pension they used to have. They don't. You can't buy health care like you could just a generation ago. Yeah. The numbers are good for people who are on Wall Street and who are running companies, right. but they're not good for the people who are right. who are working there, struggling to figure out how to make it in this new economy. Mm. Well, so, it leaves it to you then, Dennis. I, What's your State of the Union? And I think it's divided by perspective. I think that there are people that can look at things and, and see things that they're pr proud about and that they're happy about and they can see optimistic things. And then there are th other viewpoints that raise really serious questions. So depending on your world view is how you see us as a nation right now. All politics is local. Correct. Very hyper local yes. then. Um, I'm curious then as to what you made this past week though as the president said that he basically is not interested in what Nancy Pelosi or any of them are going to bring to him uh, because there won't be money for the wall. We're headed it would appear for his emergency declaration. What does that do to us? As a conservative I have a real problem with it because it's an expansion of presidential power and executive power and whether it's a Democratic president or a Republican president uh, I think it re raises real issues and real qualms and any true conservative should have a problem with that. Mm. I really appreciate your intellectual honesty because that, it, it really is a serious problem. What happens, for example, if, if, if you're a conservative, someday a Democrat will be president. A Democrat could declare a national emergency and say all guns because of gun safety. You can't have guns anymore. Or could, or could have a very extreme, what you would think is an extreme climate change mm -hmm. initiative. So you're right, this is a terrible precedent that he's about to set. Hey, Henry, but, is this a slope you want to see the president go down? No. 
No, I, I, I agree with my colleagues, I, I, and, and I see it as a negotiating tact on, on his part. I mean, that would be disastrous if he went down that, that route. But the, the other thing is, is I, I'm, I'm tired of, of the issue. I mean, if you poll the American people, on the right, there's, there's this incessant talk about a wall. 70% of, of the public doesn't think that's a priority. Yeah. That should, that's right. dead last right. on presidential pri uh, priorities. Same thing on the left. Uh, the, the left is obsessed with global warming. Uh, poll the public. It's dead last in their concern. I mean, uh, you know, let, let's get, I mean, the, the, both these politicians on the left and the right, Trump and Pelosi, are appealing to bases, but they're not talking about broader issues that ultimately unite yes, us, but, like but, economics. But Pelosi was an elected president. Pelosi did not put her hand you know, in the Bible. Speaker of the House, third yeah, most I, powerful person in the world. I government. understand, I understand, but uh, she did not put her hand in the Bible and swore to be the President of the United States. I think what we have is, it's unfortunate we don't have too many people who are willing to speak up. You have Senator Lindsey Graham, who once upon a time was a political statesman, now egging the President on, on this issue of uh, a national emergency. So I think what you see is, even though we are still a nation of laws, not of men, as Mueller has, <laughs> Mueller has proven that, but we, we, we're tilting towards almost authoritarian tendencies where you have politicians in Washington willing to just give in because the president has made this declaration, like he's, mm. he's issued an edict, so everybody should just fall in line. You're the first person I've heard suggest that there aren't enough people speaking up in Washington right now. It's, it's deafening uh, to me sometimes. Uh, Ron, where is this headed as far as this? Uh, we had this crazy moment this past week where the intelligence chief said, here's all the problems. And as Senator Peters just said, he didn't mention the one that the president seems to say is the biggest. And then the president kind of throws a lot of water on the people that not only are his intelligence chiefs, but he appointed them. I never thought I, I lived to see the day where a president of the United States would dump on the intelligence community, when a Republican president would dump on the foreign policy community, when a Republican president would um, shame um, and castigate the Department of Justice, when a Republican president um, would cozy up uh, to the Russian prime minister and give, uh, give the Russians more credence um, on our national security than his own intelligence community. It's, it's deplorable. Is there a possibility, uh, because the president has a base beneath him, Dennis, that uh, seems attached to him no matter what. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard to envision what event pulls them away, but to them he remains right because he is so resolute, right? Yes, and, and for them that shows that confidence is that he is, he believes what he says, he's going to stand by it. Why would he waver if, you know, that is what he believes? So, no, they, they fully support him and they will stick with him. I wanted to bring this back to one very interesting thing that happened this past week as we've dealt with the polar vortex. Um, Henry, you and everybody else here got the, got the message on your phone <laughs> that night at about 10.30 <laughs> asking you to turn down the thermostat in your house. The reaction of people, some who were so indignant, how dare you ask me uh, how, to, how I'm going to run my own household, and others saying, what's wrong with you people who can't give in for the community good? What would you make of that? I, I missed it, so <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I asked the right guy. Then. <laughs> right, yeah, I, yeah. The uh, whatever, were, whatever emergency traveling. channel they yes. used, yeah, didn't didn't work on me. So uh, our house uh, remained uh, with power and at 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. 70. You didn't. You didn't pitch in. I didn't. Didn't pitch in. I'm afraid. Thankfully, I did. You. you <laughs> I pitched in. You pitched in. Yeah, Went to 65 degrees, Dennis? As did our household, yes. And? We Ron? did. You know what surprised me, though, is, is how much of the fuel um, is controlled by just one uh, plant out in Macomb County. Yeah. It's 65 percent, 70 percent of the fuel. It seemed to expose a vulnerability. It didn't is. It? I was very surprised by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll come back. We'll uh, get everybody's Super Bowl thoughts. This is Flashpoint on Local 4. Don't go away.